In a representative democracy, candidates always want to know what the electorate is thinking. For the past 70 years or so, most candidates have used sur surveys, public opinion polls, to supplement what they can get from talking with their constituents. 2016 is widely taken to be uh, an election that invalidated the polls, revealed how inaccurate they are. In fact, the opposite is the case. The national surveys were closer to an accurate prediction of the national election outcome uh, in 2016 than they were in 2012. The problem came not at the national level, but at the state level. In many states, there weren't any polls or any good polls. And as we've learned, at least one major presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton's campaign, did not conduct standard surveys in a number of states that turned out to be crucial in the three weeks before the election. Polls most frequently go wrong because they don't predict turnout correctly. And in several states in 2016, for example, the standard models of who was going to vote did not take into account the kind of mobilization of less frequent voters, blue-collar voters, that Donald Trump was able to achieve in key states and in key parts of those states. And similarly, in 2018, the big question is who is going to show up? That is why survey researchers make a distinction between registered voters and likely voters. And it's when you make the move from registered voters to likely voters that your model is, comes into play. And if you get that model wrong, then your survey is not going to be accurate, even though it's technically impeccable in every other respect. You'd like to be reasonably confident that what you're talking about is what is of concern to the voters who will be deciding your fate in November. So you want to know whether an issue is salient, whether it resonates. And you'd also like to know which kinds of arguments for and against specific issues are likely to be most effective. And candidates who are using surveys to find out how people will respond to issues and arguments uh, are making the most effective use of their scarce survey research dollars. Both political parties have locked in at this point on the issues that they think will drive their supporters to the polls. The Republican Party, under President Trump's determined leadership, is focusing on issues like immigration and the federal judiciary. On the Democratic side, survey research has determined that health care, and in particular coverage for pre-existing conditions, is the top concerns on the mind of many, many voters. They are also hitting women's issues very hard because survey research has determined that women are far more discontented with not only the policies of the Trump administration, but also the personal conduct of the president than men are.